Who's the odds-on favorite to win the 2024 Bassmaster Classic? What should you be watching for? And who could be the sneaky winner? That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you can do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, you like vlogs and you like lure reviews and other stuff, click that like and subscribe button and become part of the team and family. And I really, really appreciate it. So for years when I did the radio show, Ken Du, Cousin Ken would come in and we do our odds on favorite on who we thought were the best chances to win the Classic. We did that almost 18 years ago. We did it every year, kind of debating who we thought was the odds on favorite to win. I'm going to do that again this year, but without Ken. And I'm going to do it just slightly different. I'm going to do it like it's a five-star recruiting, a basketball player or a football player. The highest recruits will get the five stars. The lowest are going to get the one stars. And normally I would go through the 56 angler field, but I'm going to try to keep it to somewhat a minimum. And here's why. While I really think it's great that the open winners get an automatic bid to the classic, the odds are they're not going to do very well. In the Over the time I have watched and been part of the Bassmaster Classic and going to it and covering it and doing everything, there's not been one time where one of those anglers usually gets in that top 10. Can they? Yes. Is there a chance? Sure. But the odds are they're, going, they're not going to do very well. And that's not me throwing shade at them. A lot of them have never been put into the, the spotlight that you're put into when you fish the Bassmaster Classic. It is by far the biggest, best tournament of fishing that there is on the planet. And the amount of media and flotilla boats and anglers and being the best of the best anglers or a majority of the best of the best anglers uh, from the Elite Series makes it very tough for those open anglers who got an automatic bin to do well. And I want to see him do well. For instance, I'd love to see Ben Milliken crush it and make everyone look bad. But if you look at from an odds maker standpoint, the odds just aren't very good. But we're going to go through a bunch of anglers right now. And let's talk a little bit about where they're going. They're going to Grand Lake. It's the first time they've been there since 2016. During that time, that was when Jason Christie was in first place after day one and two. And then Edwin Evers had just an absolutely smashing day on the third day, coming back and winning it by a bunch. But Jason is coming back with a vengeance. And honestly, I'm going to just spoil this now. There probably is no one more of a favorite than Jason Christie again this year. It's his home lake. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. So 2024, they're back at Grand Lake, 56 Angler Field. While it's one of the tough, toughest tournaments to get into, overall to win it, it's probably the easiest tournament these anglers could win at because there just isn't the amount of boaters and anglers that are normally in the, the other tournaments. This is 56 anglers competing for one tournament and $300,000 and the classic championship. The thing that most anglers want more than any other tournament or probably any other tournament there is. I will say I think majority of anglers would rather be angler of the year, but having that classic title to your name is something that's renowned and puts you at another level for sponsors and puts you at another level in the fans' eyes also. And last time they were at Grand Lake, forward-facing sonar didn't play a huge part. This year it will. And I can tell you there's a few things I can predict right now. Number one, and I have it written down, Jason Christie will be in the hunt. It's just... It's just how it is. Jason Christie, this is his home pond. He's done well every time they've been there. He he has that, he knows what it takes to win the Classic. Not to mention, he knows the pond and the lake so well that he's going to have spots over spots over spots. And Jason's just one of those anglers that can focus and win anytime he wants to. My second thing I think you can predict real early. Matt Robertson is going to talk about drinking beer out with friends and cracking oaken beers as he walks over the stage. That you can guarantee. While not my way of doing things at all, I understand that it is it has made him a fan favorite. Don't know if this is the right time to do it, but to each his own. But you can guarantee he'll be talking about drinking beers with all the fans afterwards and crack, cracking one open as he 
goes over the stage. My third thing I can predict is that fans and you, most of you, are not going to be happy because forward-facing sonar is going to play a big role in the winner of the 2024 Classic. I know it's it's the subject of all subject. It's what everybody talks about. It's what most videos are made of on YouTube these days. But forward-facing sonar has to be used to catch fish for these guys. Can they catch it without them? Yes. Does it make it more interesting if they can find more fish? Yes. So forward-facing sonar is going to play a big role, and we just need to get used to it and just go, okay, enough is enough. That's the truth. Enough is enough. Until they ban it or whatever they do to make a change to it, we have to just change. And really, quite honestly, bass anglers don't like to change. I'm I'm one of them. I stick to the same spots every time I go fishing. I know the, where the holes are. I know where I can catch fish. We don't want to deal with change. And forward-facing sonar is change for the industry, and it's going to play a big role. Number four. This will be the biggest classic of all time. Most attended, best. It's This is going to be massive. And last but not least, the Open winners and the Bass Nation winners will do well and probably, they probably won't be in contention. It's just how it is. It's just, it's a big, it's a big jump from where they are to the lead anglers. So while I hope they do well and I wish them the best, the odds are that they're not going to. Now we're going to look at this in terms of recruiting. If I'm out there looking for a basketball or baseball or football team, who are my five-star recruits? There's only one, and that's Jason Christie. Jason Christie is on the top of the list. If you're creating a fantasy uh, fishing team, Jason Christie should be the one. Can someone else win it? Sure. Will someone possibly do better than Jason? It, it's possible. But if you have to look at the odds on favorite and how he's fished at these events and Home Lake and everything, Home Lake has used to never play a big part, but now it's a massive part on who wins and who doesn't. Jason Christie knows Grand Lake as well as anybody in this country. So Jason Christie is my five-star recruit. When I go to my four-star recruits, I only have a few. Greg Hackney is one, Brandon Palinick is two, and Patrick Walters are my four, four and a half star recruits. All three of them can win at any time. Patrick Walters is probably one of the best anglers on the planet, probably one of the top three anglers on the planet. He just can win anywhere. Great at forward-facing sonar, fishes well there, and is just on top of things. Same with Brandon Palahniuk. I can see Brandon Palahniuk winning and I think it would be great for the for the industry if Brandon won the Classic. Brandon also knows his forward-facing sonar very well. Good at Grand Lake and then Greg, Greg Hackney is just in his own element. He's also very good on Grand Lake, did very well in 2016 and is coming back and should be in that top five or six anglers out there. So those are my four, four and a half star recruits. When I get to my three, three and a half star recruits, I have several of them, starting with Hank Cherry, two-time Bassmaster Classic champion, knows how to win, can win there, and has fished very well there. So Hank Cherry is probably that three and a half star recruit for me. Also, I go down to Brandon Cobb, who is great with forward-facing sonar, also fishes very well there, and is a great angler, as well as my, another guy that I think has a very good shot at winning because he's fished well there in the past, and that's Brandon Card. Brandon is a great angler and is good at for his forward-facing sonar, needs a first win, and is one of the guys I am constantly rooting for. One of the best people on the planet. So I hope Brandon does very well. I also have Gussie in that three, three and a half star recruit. And then Luke Palmer, who is another Oklahoma angler, who's in that really three and a half, four, to be honest, only because he has the local knowledge and that has a big part on how fishing is gonna go on during the classic. So there's my three, three and a half, four-ish anglers that are I would recruit. When we get to three stars and below, you'll have a lot of anglers. Anglers like Matt Airy, Justin Barnes, Drew Benton, Kyle Welcher, Matt Robertson, Ben Milliken, I think is in that three only because he's I think he's the highest guy that's won an open. John Cox, who I think if it, the fish move forward in our shallow water fishing, I think John Cox then bumps up to a three and a half, four star and has an opportunity to win. And honestly, John Cox is my sneaky winner because there's a good chance that these fish will start to move forward. If they do, then that takes forward facing sonar out of play a little bit more and John can just focus on doing what he does well, shallow water, sight fishing and if that's the case john cox should could really crush him i've got trey mckinney bob downey and several others in that 
three star ranking and the rest of the guys I have under that now I don't want to go through every angler and go oh they're a one or a two or a three because that would just be boring after overall but those guys I talked about are the guys I think have an opportunity when you get into that three star and above there's a really good shot that if things work out the way that they, they want it to that they'll catch fish and then have a good tournament but there's a few guys that are way up there on the list either because they're home waters, good at forward-facing sonar, or just flat-out smoking fish. So we'll see. We'll see who's going to win. It's going to be a great classic that's going to be very well attended. I can't wait. Not to mention, it does bring in over $30 million to that area up there. And there's some great places. That was the second classic I ever went to in 2016. It was one of the most fun tournaments I ever went to. I actually was with Brandon Palnick that year on the boat as a marshal. And it was one of the coldest times I've ever been in my life. And that's the day Brandon Palnick played the cruelest joke on me of all time. Had me dress up like the uh, Michelin Man and then told me we were going to have a 45 minute run. And we literally drove across the other side of the pond and put down. And I, I couldn't even close my arms. I had so much so many clothes on but that's why Brandon's a good dude so you tell me who you think is gonna be the winner of the classic in the comments below and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button please so remember take a kid fishing get your fish on I'll talk to you very soon cheers